Well, hey, B. It's Jamie. That's me here. Oh, welcome back to the channel, honey. Welcome back to another episode of this. Is messy, okay? So let us uh, go ahead and get that together, okay? So make sure that you guys are coming into the video. You are liking up the video for me, okay? Definitely do that. Subscribe to the channel if you have yet to do so as I pull this up, honey, so that we can get into some things, all right? So y'all already know how this go for the people that don't know this is messy is where we pretty much get into questions a shout out to six brown chicks chat we get into these questions and people be wanting advice and all of this stuff so we do our best to help the people okay so help us help me help them okay let's uh, get into question one question one says um 2024 is a year of reckoning and a year of truth in my house i married danielle 15 years ago out of lust okay there are four boys in this house 13 11 9 and 6 and the and at the most only two of them are mine i spend more quality time and money on the two oldest boys because i know they're mine. I don't mistreat the other two. I'm just not interested in them. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a little disrespectful. And I decided that I wouldn't financially support them either. If these kids aren't mine, they'll be Danielle's responsibility. Well, it sounds like y'all need to be headed over there to paternity court, okay? Or somebody court where you can get paternity, honey. That's what it sounds like, okay? He says, if these kids aren't mine, they'll be Danielle's responsibility. Hell, it seems like they already Danielle's responsibility, according to you, baby, because you said that you're not really interested in them, and you always do for the oldest two because you know they're yours. You get them time and money, but the other ones you don't give nothing to. So it seems like they already Danielle's responsibility. All right. I demanded paternity tests because as these kids grow older, I realize they're not mine. The looks, the mannerism, their odd childhood illnesses. When I requested the paternity test last year, Danielle cried and threatened a divorce. I bought an at home DNA kit, okay, or at least I bought at home DNA kits anyway and tested the children. None of them were mine. I thought I did the test wrong, so I took the kids to a center to get tested. I'm zero for four. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm zero for four. None of these kids are mine. Danielle says I'm the only father the kids have ever known, and it's my responsibility to take care of them. Mm -hmm. She thinks the kids will suffer emotionally if I walked away. I believe it's time to cut this cheating whore and her little bastards. Not you to call the babies little bastards. Loose and build a solo life that makes me happy. Is this the right thing to do? P.S. I haven't told the kids that I'm not their dad yet. I told Danielle that she has to do that. Baby. Child, this is a long letter here for 2024. Okay, so listen. I don't blame that man for kind of getting them DNA tests. Sometimes you just need to know what the fuck going on, okay? So it's the giving that the kids is not his. For him to say that, um, basically think assume that these kids are not his responsibility, Danielle says, I'm the only father these kids have ever known, have ever known and it's her, his responsibility to take care of them. Unfortunately for you, sir, a lot of judges will see it the same way as Danielle because y'all were married, okay? So because y'all were married, it's likely that your ass will still be held responsible to take care of those children because you assume responsibility of them when you marry their damn mama. So that's a possibility. Just want to let you know, okay? Um, When it comes down to telling them kids who's the dad versus who, who's not, listen, Oh, that's tough. Some part of me is like, that is on Danielle. You are the one that made the mistake. But I also see nothing wrong with him being the person to let them know. But he don't want to do it. And he ain't going to do it, clearly. So it's going to have to fall on Danielle. Just like the responsibility of the last two fell on Danielle. Um, I don't know what to tell you, Miss Danielle. You know, I don't even know what to tell him. He's somebody, did he do the right thing? Listen. If you feel like you did the right thing, honey, then you did the right thing when it comes to this, okay? Um, because they not his kids. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, I don't think the man is 100% wrong because I feel like they not his damn kids. Why he got to sit up there and take care of them? 
if they're not his. You know what I'm saying? And she knew that she was wrong, so she gonna have to live with the mistakes that she chose to make. Um, but yeah, I mean that's really it. Like, I mean, I don't think he was 100 percent wrong for going to get no damn test to make sure these kids are his. Like, and none of the kids his. Like, he needed to know that. Hell, the kids need to know that. Especially while he over there talking about these odd childhood illnesses. Hell, they may need some blood. They may need a heart. I ain't going to say a heart, but they may need an organ or something like that, child. And they probably ain't going to get it from his ass. So they need to know that that's not their daddy, okay? And you might need to go out there and find who the fuck their daddy is because them kids deserve to know that. So um, he told me some hashtag childish, child. I cannot... Uh, I mean, I probably would want to go and live a damn solo life, too. You know, it does suck for the children. The children are going to be emotionally affected, which I do believe, you know, when she said that, I believe she was right. They are going to be emotionally affected, not only by the fact that you're not their dad, but their entire dynamic of what they thought a family was is changing, okay? Hell, you didn't even interact with the younger two, so they probably going to be glad as hell to see your ass get the fuck up out the house. They probably going to be like, I'm glad that nigga gone. He was rude as hell to us anyway and disrespectful. He ain't like us for real. Okay, so they probably gonna be glad as far as the other, t the older two, they gonna miss out on them coins you used to give them. But, um, yeah, it's a sad situation, you know. You would think it would be wise if they both sat down and told the children what was going on, depending on the ages. Well, 13, 11, 9, and 6. Ooh, yeah, um, I don't know. I kind of feel like that falls on the mama. But y'all let me know. I'm sure y'all will eat me up in the comments, and I'll let y'all do just that. Just add the seasoning accordingly, honey. Let's go ahead and move on. Get like. Okay, let's get to question number two. All right. So question two says, greetings from Mississippi. I'm a married high school teacher. I'm sorry, high school art teacher. I had an affair with the married father of one of my top students. Girl, the teachers is going to prey on the parents and the kids. Let's keep going. Not all teachers, just some. We were careful and responsible. We were only having fun. We never meant to ruin our home fronts. Right before Xmas break, my student used her father's laptop to complete an assignment, and she found our Facebook messages. She captured the racy messages, printed them out, and gift-wrapped Xmas gifts with, with the messages. No, she didn't. Girl, you are your mama's child, honey. Yes, you are. Not you done printed out the racy messages between your mama and the teacher, and you done printed them out and gift wrapped them hoes. Come on, girl. That's my kind of petty. She gave the gifts to her friends. The messages are embarrassing. I can't wait to ram your D-I-C-K down my throat again. Now, why would she pass this shit out to them friends like that? Oh, miss, my DMs blew up with pics of this. Former students who I've failed before are threatening to create a T-shirt line with the messages. My husband is telling everyone to embarrass me, and he's message what? And he's leaving me. Oop. How to stop the madness. I tried to have the students suspended, but the school doesn't want to get involved in a free speech lawsuit. Bitch, I'm rolling. Not a free speech lawsuit, child. That is comical, honey. And she didn't give anyone on school's grounds. I may lose my job. My lover has not responded to my messages. Help. Girl, ain't nobody finna help you, girl. You over there talking about losing your job, but you need to be jumping ship trying to hurry up and get a new job while you can before this shit go nationwide, okay, or countywide. You need to be jumping ship trying to go ahead and get you a new job and saving face, okay, while you can get you a little grace, ma'am. Girl, I'm here for that daughter. And that daughter said, B.I.T., not you over here messing with my mama husband, my daddy. Girl, I'm finna ear your ass out. And I'm finna pass it out. And she was smarter than you. Not your own student smarter than your ass because she knew not to pass and give nothing while on school grounds. But pass it out to everybody when she was out of, out of school, off the school premises. I am cackling. Not your husband up there talking about embarrassed her ass saying I'm leaving her. That's what her ass get. And you over here worried about losing your job while you losing your man and your family. But you need to be trying to get a new job while you can. Okay? 
Go ahead and apply your ass off. And then why is you still over here messaging this man thinking y'all in it together? Girl, your husband over there telling you that he embarrassed your ass and that he finna leave you. What you think her, his wife over there telling him? And you still over there sending messages down to the Facebook. Girl, if you don't cut your shit, I don't feel sorry for her. Ain't nobody finna help her. Good luck. I girl, I done told you to go find, go somewhere and find you another job. I done told her where to go. Question three, <clears throat> cause this is messy. All right, girlfriend of one and a half years was the bridesmaid in her best friend's wedding. I knew she was the woman I'd marry, and my intent was to propose to her at our apartment after the wedding. Okay, three of my fraternity brothers served as groomsmen. At the wedding reception, one of my frat brothers pulled me aside and asked, "You hitting it too?" No, he didn't, child. I said, yeah, I'm locking her down. He looked sick and told me that my girlfriend allowed or insisted that they run a train on her at the bachelor party. I didn't believe him. He brought another frat over to confirm. This frat had pics. He said she wanted her private orgy with the groomsmen because the groom turned her down. You're just a trifling hoe. Just trifling, okay? Her proudly, he proudly added three words I'll never forget. We hit rock. Now, why would y'all all do that? That's just nasty. Why would y'all all do that here? Just so y'all don't care about the STDs and get nobody pregnant. Now, y'all just be on another level. My girlfriend raced over to pull me away from them so we could dance. I left her at the reception. Not, not you did she called me. She called me. Guess what I found out today? Her, because she drunk. About my brain tumor? I'm sorry I hid it. It's aggressive, and it's the next thing I could do at this point. But live. Can we at least be good to each other and have fun while I'm still here? The tumor is real. She also has medical marijuana for pain, and surgery isn't an option at this point. She asked me to marry her before the end so she can leave this world as a respected married woman and make her father proud. I can't stand well, I can't stand with her as my bride, knowing that she likely fucked every man in the room. Advice. Advice is trust yourself and stand by what the hell you said and stand on business, okay? That's what it's given. All right, I hate it for her. I hurt. I hate this. You know, she has this brain tumor, and she out here just trying to live and feeling like I'm going to die anyway, so might as well just let me risk it all. All right, but you don't have to risk with her in my personal because um, I feel like you marrying her and smashing her, you're going to be smashing all your homeboys too, technically, smashing everybody she done smashed. But I think that you need to just let it go, be a support system if you choose to be and a friend for her. But as far as marrying that woman, that's a D-E-A-D. Oh, that's not, I ain't mean to say D-E-A-D, knowing that she, uh, she got this tumor on the brain. Lord have mercy. But <clears throat> I think you should trust yourself. And don't let somebody else make you feel guilty. Because I feel like her using this brain tumor situation is a way for her to manipulate you. And the fact that you come into the public to ask the people what they think and asking them for help shows me just how easily manipulated your ass is. And just how close she done got in that brain that you got to second guess your own decision on what you should do. No, trust yourself. Trust yourself more than you trust her. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Absolutely not, honey. Let her go. Good luck, okay? Good luck. She could go find somebody else that's willing to marry her ass and make her an honest, respectable married woman, okay? Let's go ahead and move on. <clears throat> Question four. I attended an old high school skate party thrown by a Facebook friend. I haven't skated in more than 10 years, and I had fun. I bumped into my ex, Chris, at the party. He was there skating with the Facebook friend. Chris was happy to see me, and we dated for like three years, and he dumped me for no reason like a month ago. The Facebook friend cornered me and demanded that I apologize for sleeping with her husband, Chris, for the past three years. I didn't even know Chris was married. 
oh my girl what my mind was really really suddenly everything made sense especially chris's disappearing acts and lack of money i told her that chris never told me he was married she called me a dumb b-i-t-c-h and threatened me if i saw him again i decided to leave chris followed me long story short chris and i hooked up in the parking lot and his wife caught us she beat us with her skates and broke my windshield now, didn't this lady give you a warning on what the hell she was going to do to you if she catch you with her man again? But I'm glad that you said she beat y'all and not just beat your ass, okay? Because Chris is her husband, all right? And that's the one that really has a duty to her. So I'm glad that she was over there whooping and whapping on both of y'all ass, all right? She says, he's back in my house. I let him stay here out of spite for his wife. So you try and get your ass whooped again. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what you're trying to do. Because that would seem like you're trying to get your ass tagged again. It's what it's seeming like. And it's the fact that Chris ain't got nowhere to stay. For me, that he back at your house. And you acting like you doing something to get back at the wife. Yikes, okay? She says, I thought Chris would be here for a week or so. But he brought his clothes and furniture to my place. We never discussed him moving in. And I don't want him here eating up my food and doubling my utility bills. Well, you should have thought about that. Because you thought you was over there being spiteful to somebody for taking a man. And the lady turned around and said, you can have this motherfucker. Because it ain't like this motherfucker finna add no value. Anyway, if anything, he finna sit up here and add debt on your ass. So you know what? You can have this to be. That's what it was given. All right, she says, Chris doesn't work. Oh, that lady said, you can have his burden. He just eats, skates, and cheats. How did I get, how do I get rid of him but keep access to his amazing D-I-C-K? You might have to move out that house, girl. You might have to move out that house. And if you want to keep uh, access to the amazing D-I-C-K, you're going to have to continue to smash on him in odd places like the car. Okay, maybe you gonna have to pay for the hotel room because Chris ain't got no no um Chris ain't got no uh job. But honestly, you really need to let that devil D.I.C.K. go because he ain't gonna mean you no good for real, girl. He got he's still married to his wife and he out here humping and doing all that with you. Unless the wife gonna give him a, the divorce that he been yearning for. And having him asked out, that's going to be the best thing you can do. Because let me tell you, Chris not going to leave on his own. You're going to have to legit get up and move the hell out of that house. Or I saw something on Twitter where this person was like, they had to fake an eviction notice just to get somebody to fuck about their house. You could do that. Fake an eviction notice. If I find a story, I may bring it to y'all. But fake it and put some, you know, come up with a scheme. And say you getting evicted and he going to have to go. Because he ain't on your lease. And he gonna have to pay it. So like you gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be strategic and smart about this. So figure it out. Okay. Um, I done gave you a few ideas, girl. So hopefully you use them. Good luck. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Question five. My wife's pranks are out of control. I threw toothpicks in her panty drawer. No, you did not in the panty drawer. She slipped on her panties and a toothpick separated her butt cheeks. Girl, this is not authentic. This is fake. The pain, the horror scream, it was hilarious. That's all I've done to her. She replaced my gin with rubbing alcohol. So y'all basically out here trying to kill each other. If y'all don't want to be married, just say that. Okay? She sprayed stinky hair remover on my beard brush. My beard is full of bald patches, baby. But the absolute deal breaker happened when she crawled on top of me while I was asleep and put her rose sex toy in my ass and turned it on. <laughs> Y'all hate each other. That's what it's given. Okay, my knee jerk reaction was to push her off of the bed. No one plays with my ass except her rose. Uh-uh. No one plays with my ass except her rose. Did I read that right? But the absolute deal breaker happened when she crawled on top of me while I slept and put her rose SEX toy in my ass and turned it on. My knee jerk reaction was to push her off the bed. No one plays with my ass except her rose. Now I use it alone and it's amazing. Whoa! I've enjoyed it so much that I'm watching GAY. 
is what they watch it to see what they do and to decide if I like it done to me. I feel like I'm going down a slippery slope to down low land. <laughs> Oh, whoa. <laughs> I feel like I'm going down a slippery slope to down low land and I can't stop. Help. I'm not going to help you be free. <laughs> be free, baby. Be free. Okay? Let your wife know this is what happens when you play too much. Okay? This is what happens when you play too much. You just might meet your match, bitch. Okay? I just might give you what you want, honey. All right? Why you trying to push shit up my ass? Okay, all right, but some of you on the slippery slope to down low, baby. You probably been slipping on that slope for a long time, honey. Okay, uh, but be free, be free, do what you're gonna do because you're gonna do it anyway. Because it's just how you is, all right. But if you decide you're finna tiptoe out the house and slide over there with somebody else, go ahead and hit that wife with that divorce, okay. But either way, honey, good luck. Let's keep going, girl. These folks here. <clears throat> question six an older woman at work always smiles when she sees me once i caught her whispering about me to two other co-workers my baby mama is pregnant again so i figured i could play with the old lady for a while i may even get some extra perks at work so i became her work husband bringing her chai tea talking about her african art etc i just wanted to because i was bored and curious Finally, she asked me to come to her house for drinks. I started an argument with my baby mama and told her I wasn't coming straight home. I arrived at the old lady's house, and she introduces me to her gay grandson. I think y'all should know each other. Ooh, shit. I tell her I'm not gay. I'm just skinny and well-dressed. And she, she apologizes. I'm so sorry. Everyone at work thinks you're gay. He says I'm not. My male manager is spreading rumors about me. We had one encounter. I was the giver, not the receiver. So clearly I'm not gay. So clearly you do not understand it. So clearly you do not understand it, sir. So what are you? Are you bi? Are you bi? Or are you coming by there lying? What is it? How do I stop my manager from telling everybody without getting fired? Listen, I don't know. You might have to give it to him again for him to not tell everybody. That's probably why he's telling everybody because you ain't give it to him no more. Might have to give it to him again. How about you just quit the damn job and go find you another one? So you ain't got to worry about that, okay? Or you can go to HR and, and, you know, report them or something like that. You probably could get them fired without you getting fired. Ain't no telling. But I think you should really just try and lead a job. How do I stop my manager from telling everybody? Girl, it's too late. Everybody already know. They already know. So it's too late. You, It ain't no stopping. Okay? Tell me something. Damn, we had one encounter. I was the giver, not the receiver. So you think just because you're receiving only that you gay? You don't think the people that give it? Some people enjoy giving it. That's all they want to do is give it. And they okay with being gay. So you think because you give it, you ain't gay? Well, the fact that you got a baby mama and stuff, I guess you're bi. Are you admitting to that or you still want to believe that you're hetero? Let the people know. Uh, but I gave you a piece of advice. I'll let the other folks give you the rest of it, okay? Um, so good luck. Y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below and help these people out. I'm Jamie. That's me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie. That's me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah. King of my city and cul de Coming, I swing like soldier at. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. I was ready for years and they died of me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross them out, I came back with some battery. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner. Packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble. I done came too far to be humble.